Hello. Good evening. How's everyone doing? Hello, hello. Hello, everyone. Good evening. Hi, good evening. How are you? I'm okay, thanks. Thank you. I'm good. Thank you. Thank you for asking. It is our Friday. Kind of. For us, it is. It is for us. Today is the midterm review. But before we start doing the midterm review, we have to finish up with our reading that we left off yesterday. So yesterday we reviewed the use of by plus gerund a little bit more, using gerunds with a few more prepositions. And um, what's the usual scenarios where you will use them, right? We did a knowledge check, we did an exercise with that, but we were missing the reading exercise. So we will do that today. As you can see, our midterm test is not that long. We only have one, two, three, four, five sections. So we do have time to do a little bit of a, a, little bit of a reading exercise and just uh, use this as practice. So um, we will start by doing that. I will give everyone a few minutes to join. Mientras esperamos que los demás se unan, I will outline the um, paragraphs or the sections that everyone will be reading so that we can distribute the reading. that we already know. And then the rest from here. Mm, can't really understand that, right? All right, let's do this instead. From here until here. And from there until here. Right, so that's going to be number number three in blue. And then number two in green. And number one in red. And then someone will do number four in yellow from here until here. That'll be number four. I see that we are nine people already, so that's great. Then someone will do whoops, orange number five until here. We are 11 people now. Hello, good evening, everyone. Those who are just joining, we are
sectioning this reading. We are sectioning this reading so that we can all do a section. This is six. And then we'll do logical. And then we'll do visual. Musical. And I'll finish the reading. All right. So we are 13 people already. We are 13 people. So welcome, everyone. Welcome to all of those that just joined. Good evening. I hope that you are doing great. I was sharing with everyone that today is our Friday, so we don't have class tomorrow. We are going to be reviewing the midterm test today, but um, as you can see in the platform, we only have about five sections um, in the platform, so we have a little bit of time to do a review of the reading that we left off yesterday. And since we have a little bit of time, we're going to do that. We are going to do the reading. So I would like to know who wants to read today. I know that this reading has uh, some difficult words. Sé que algunas palabras un poco difíciles, pero please uh, go ahead if you want to read. And if there is any word that you don't know how to pronounce, let me know and I will help you. Uh, so why don't you go ahead and put it in the chat if you want to read, if you want to participate, you can type down me and I will start choosing people, volunteers who want to read. Nice. Okay, we have the first one. Nice. I, I'm going to need at least, por lo menos, oh, I see Rigoberto's hand. Okay, two people. I see Anna. That's three, four, five. Yeah, there we go. All right, we got our volunteers. So let's go, we can get started. All right. Me teacher. Thank you, okay, perfect. So we have more than enough people, awesome. We will start with the first person who wrote it down in the chat, which is Natalie, Natalie Garcia. So Natalie, can you please help us read number one, the first paragraph in red? Hello, everybody. Uh, have you ever sat in class wondering if you will ever grasp the information that was being held? Maybe the, person, the presentation didn't fit your learning style. Thank you so much, Natalie. Here's what we'll do. Esto es lo que vamos a hacer. After you read, I will read the paragraph again. Después te lean, voy a leer yo. So that we go over all of the words and uh, that way we can cover it, right? Instead of going word by word. So we will do that with every paragraph. So here's me. And then we will do another paragraph. Have you ever sat in class wondering if you would ever grasp the information that was being taught. Maybe the presentation didn't fit your learning style. All right, perfect. So the next person that, no lo puso en el chat, pero he rose uh, his hand, was Rigoberto. So Rigoberto, can you please help us read uh, number two, the text in between the green line? Course. Did I start when it says our minds? Yes. Our minds and bodies gather information in different ways and from all around us, seeing, hearing, and doing. Continue until now. And doing then our brain process that information organizing it and making connections to things we are right now. 
Perfect. Thank you, Rigoberto. So here's me. Our minds and bodies gather information in different ways from all around us. Seeing, hearing, and doing. Then our brains process that information, organizing it, and making connections to things we already know. A medida vayamos leyendo, if there are any words that you don't know, please let me know antes que continuemos el siguiente paragraph. Pueden ponerlas en el chat or you can let me know. Grasp. Grasp. So, um, like getting it, right? So, um, have you ever sat in class wondering if you would ever grasp the information, you would ever get it, you know? If you would ever understand it. <clears throat> All right. Uh, and what is the difference with cut, grab, cut, and pick up? So really what this means is that we're not really using it in a literal way. No lo estamos usando de una manera literal. Porque pick up is, this is pick it up, like, right? So lifting it. And then cut is cachar. So you catch a ball or you caught the ball, caught in, is el pasado de catch. And then grasping or grasp is like agarrar o tomar, right? I can grasp something. I can grasp uh, a bunch of clothes. Um, y en esta ocasión estamos ocupándolo como una expresión. Have you ever wondered if you would ever grasp the information? Si se te, como que digamos, si se te quedaría la información. So all of those words mean picking up something, um, grasping something, catching something, pero es una expresión en esta ocasión. All right, cool. So next person that we have is Ana Pineda. Can we please read number three? Okay, this process can also work in different ways. Do we think in pictures or words? Do we remember details or the big picture? Excellent, that's perfect. I'm not gonna read that one because that was perfect. So that's excellent. I won't read that again. That was perfect. All right, next person I have is, uh, let's see, it's uh, Ivania. Can you please help us read number four? Okay. When we're trying, when we, sorry. Uh, when we are when we are trying to learn, it helps to know how our brain works. How do we best gather and organize organize information? Different people have different learning styles. Excellent. Thank you so much, Ivania. So there we go. So let's read that again. We go, when we're trying to learn, it helps to know how our brain works. How do we best gather and organize information? Different people have different learning styles. Thank you so much. Perfect. Uh, then I have Ana Godinez. Please help us with number five. Continuing, for example, and until the orange line. Okay. For example, one person might struggle with reading information but understand it immediately in the illustration. Another person might have problems with the pictures but not the written text. Perfect, Anna. Thank you so much. For example, one person might struggle with written information, but understand it immediately in an illustration. Another person might have problems with the picture, but not the written or written test, text. Nice. Thank you. All right. Let's do uh, number six, please, Marcela, the orange square. Psychologists have identified seven basic learning styles. Linguistic, 
These people learn by using language, listening, reading, speaking, and writing. Thank you so much, Marce. Thank you. So that is psychologists have identified seven basic learning styles, linguistic. These people learn by using language, listening, reading, speaking, and writing. Excellent. Thank you. Now let's continue with Maritza. Please do uh, the next one, logical. Logical. These people learn by applying formulas and scientific principles. That is perfect. I'm not going to read that because that was awesome. Excellent. All right. We have a couple more. Who else wants to participate? Who else wants to read? Type down me in the chat. You can go can again. If... Yeah, of course, please. Let's do, uh, let's do visual and musical. Let's do both, visual and musical. Okay. <clears throat> These people learn by seeing what they are learning. Oh, visual, <laughs> visual, these people learn by seeing what they are learning. Musical, instead of finding music uh, distraction, these people learn well when information is presenting through music. That is perfect. I'm not gonna read those, that was perfect. Thank you so much, Roxanne. My pleasure. Thank you. All right, who else wants to read? Who wants to read kinesthetic? Kinesthetic, movement and physical activities help these people learn. Thank you so much, Leymar. That was perfect. I won't read that. That was excellent. And who wants to do intrapersonal? Intrapersonal. These people learn best if they associate new information directly with their own experiences. Thank you so much, Anna. Thank you. These people learn best if they associate new information directly with their own experience. That's me, actually. All right. And who wants to do interpersonal? Let's see, let's see who's raising their hand. Alma, please go. Oh, I'm so sorry, I forgot. Es que como no te vi en el chat. Please go ahead. Uh, do you want to read interpersonal in the final uh, paragraph, please? Okay, interpersonal. These people learn best yeah. if they associate new information. I don't see because the... Oh, oh no, I'm sorry, it's uh, interpersonal. That's uh, interpersonal. Okay. Yeah, please. These people learn well by working with others. You will often encounter situations that do not match your strongest learning style. If you know what your strengths are, you can develop strategies to balance your weakness for more successful learning experience. Thank you so much, Bunny. Thank you. So that is interpersonal. These people learn well by working with others, with other people. You will often or often, often or often encounter situations that do not match your strongest learning style. If you know what your strengths are, you can develop strategies to balance your weaknesses for a more successful learning experience. Excellent, you all did an amazing job. So let's do a quick review before we go into the midterm, final review of this text. Um, what words uh, do you want to learn? Are there any words that you don't know that you would like to learn? Or we know all the words, do you know all the words? Teacher, I have a question. Yes. Uh, what's the meaning in the paragraph number three, the gather? How do we best gather and organize information? I don't know what's the meaning of gather. gather. Let's see. Do we think in picture paragraph number three? 
So paragraph number four. Oh, so the section, four, I'm sorry, I was reading yeah. the, the, the sections, not the paragraph, sorry. All right, let's see. Yeah, yeah, it's number four, sorry. Yeah, no worries. How do we best gather and organize information? Gather is a synonym for recollecting. So how do we best gather? Como um, colectamos or how do we get information from different places and organize that information for us to learn. So gathering is getting from different places or getting different things from a place. Oh, thank you. My pleasure. Any, are there any other words? Anyone wants to learn? Struggle. Struggle. In the same paragraph. Mm -hmm. When something's hard, you struggle. Sometimes you struggle to learn because it's very hard. Um, or sometimes when you're at the gym, uh, when you are going to the gym, you struggle to have motivation, right? So it's, uh, it means that it's difficult for you. You struggle um, to do that. Okay, thank you. My pleasure. And you can say, I am struggling with learning whatever I am struggling with my homework I uh, or I have a lot of struggles right now about anything any other words let me clear the screen right here all righty let's do the quick review of the Oh, I see Marvin also asked about struggles, so that's what it is. Let's do the quick review of uh, some of the questions that we had about the reading. So, match its word with its meaning. We will go over grasp, as someone asked. So, what did we say the grasp was? Trying hard to do something, understanding, uh, something that takes tension away, show one thing is connected to another, a general view of a situation or pick up or collect? Understand. Understand. That's Love right. It. What about the big picture? When you say that, let's see the big picture of this situation. What do you think that means? A general, a general view. view of a general a view of a situation. situation. That is right. And what about gather? What did we say gathering was? Pick up, pick up, pick up or, or collect. Collecting information or things, right? Gathering and struggling. What is that? Try hard to do something. something. Try hard to do something. Trying hard to do something or having a difficult time doing something. That's right. What's the distraction? Something, something that takes that attention, attention away. away. Exactly. And an associate, what would that be? <clears throat> one thing sure, one thing another. is connected, connected, to, connected to, to another. Right, so it's an associate thing or it's associated to something else. And there we go. That was the last exercise that we had for the section three. And now we can move on to the midterm test. But before we do that, do you have any questions? Any other questions about section three before we review the midterm test? Going at one, going at two. Alrighty, then we can focus on the midterm test. So as you can see, our midterm test consists of five sections. One listening section, completing the sentences. Maybe this is the longest one. We have choosing the correct option, a drop down section. We have to write the correct answers. And finally, we have a reading that we're gonna be doing together. So some of you may have already done this um, 
this midterm test, some may have already started it, um, or you have not started it at all. In any case, we will be doing this today. So uh, by today or tomorrow, you can have this midterm test finished. And by next week, we can start working on section four, all right? <clears throat> yes. I have a problem in the exercise number two. Uh, for the midterm and, test? Yes. All righty, we uh, will go over the section two. We will go in order. So uh, we'll complete the, section And letter B, complete the sentence. All right, part, we will- Part number one, the letter five. Okay, we will go in order. We will complete section A first, and then we will get to section B. Okay. Thank you. All right, perfect. So I'll, I'll remember that so we can go over that section. All righty. So our midterm test starts with a listening, um, which we will listen to. And we have two exercises for this listening section. Then we have a second listening with three ex I'm sorry, with four exercises. So we are going to do two, uh, I'm sorry, we're going to do six exercises total for the listening section. So let's start by listening to the first audio. Let me see if I am sharing audio. I think I'm not. Here we go. Let's listen. I don't think this is the right restaurant, Augusto. It doesn't look very good. I'm sure this is the one. I know it doesn't look great, but the menu looks interesting. But look, that waiter's wearing a horrible shirt. Clara, maybe he likes bright colors. I don't mean the colors. There's a huge tear in it, and it doesn't look clean. Yeah. Actually, I see what you mean. And look at this tablecloth. It's badly stained. It looks like someone spilled coffee all over it. And my glass is chipped. I could cut myself. Let's get out of here. Four. All right. So based on what we have right now for exercise number one, what does Clara tell Augusto? that the waiter shirt is ugly, that the table has a scratch on it, or that her glass is cheaped, or the first one, the, shirt, the, waiter, the waiter shirt is ugly. All righty, okay. Let's do the next one. Hello? Hello, Mr. Jones. This is Tina, the new tenant in 2C. Um, the refrigerator makes a loud noise, and it keeps leaking all over the floor. And another thing, the whole apartment needs to be repainted. I don't understand. You didn't point out any of this when you looked at the apartment last week. Well, I didn't notice the refrigerator then because I hadn't turned it on. But I thought you said you would paint the entire apartment before I moved in. Yes, okay. I'll come over right now. All right, what seems to be the main problem? The refrigerator or the painting? The refrigerator leaks. That is right. It is leaking. All righty. Now we will do the second listening part. For this one, we have four exercises. So we will start by reviewing the one for Bob. There's one. Are you going to buy that can of hairspray? Uh, yeah, Bob, I am. Why? Because those spray cans contain CFCs, which deplete the ozone layer. What does that mean? Well, many scientists think global warming is caused by the destruction of the ozone layer, and that the increase in skin cancer is due to the reduction in ozone. Spray cans cause all that? You must be joking. No, I'm serious. Not using spray cans is just one thing you can do. Another way to preserve the ozone layer is to plant trees. 
But the best way is to cut down on air pollution by reducing the number of cars. Well, why don't you spend your energy encouraging people to use public transportation instead? Don't worry. I'm working on that, too. Two. You know, I get so tired. So what does Bob recommend? Reducing pollution. pollution. Reducing pollution. So we start, the, so we stop depleting the ozone layer, right? Yeah. Tired of being told not to use my car. I just saw a TV show about global warming. And this man said that people who have cars are selfish. Well, many problems have been caused by pollution from heavy traffic. Yes, but what am I supposed to do? There's only one bus a day to the city where I work, and it leaves at noon. I have to be at work early in the morning. I know how you feel, Sonia, but one thing to do about it is to live closer to where you work. What, live in all that pollution? No, thanks. So why is she upset? People, people say, people say selfish. she's selfish. selfish. That's right. She's upset because people say she's selfish. Okay. Let's review number three. Three. I hate my job. I think I need to go back to school. Good for you, Lynn. What do you want to study? Well, I can't decide between environmental science and nutritional science. Well, would you prefer to work on the environment or specialize in diet and health when you graduate? I'm worried about how environmental problems affect people's health. For example, chemicals are being pumped into the river near where I live. I'm sure the fish farms are being contaminated by chemicals. Sounds like environmental science is for you. So, what is Lean interested in? Pollution causes health, health, health problems. Problem. Pollution causes health problems. That's right. Okay, and let's go into the last one. Sally is going to take a course, and let's hear. Tom, did you see what's being offered this summer? I'm thinking about registering for a class. Yeah, I've already registered. I'm taking astronomy. Whoops, I'm sorry. Seems like it got stuck. Let me reload it. About how environmental problems affect people's health by chemicals. Sounds like environmental science is for you. Okay, here we go, number four. Four. Tom, did you see what's being offered this summer? I'm thinking about registering for a class. Yeah, I've already registered. I'm taking astronomy. Hey, why don't you join me, Sally? It'll be fun. Well, I'd prefer to take something more useful. I was considering either auto repair or exercise science. You know, a better way to learn about auto repair is by studying car repair manuals. You can check them out of the library instead of spending money on a class. Yeah, I could try that first. So then I think I'll register for the exercise science class. I've always wanted to learn about fitness. All right. What does she uh, want to take a course in? Exercise science. science. Okay. Okie doke. Let's see and review. We are going to review each section. So if we, by any chance, don't have something right, we can go back to the listening or to the exercise and we can review what happened. So let's check. We are perfect here. All right. So before we go into section two, do you have any questions so far? I'm not too sure. All right, perfect. Now we go into section two or section B for the midterm test. So for this section, we are going to be completing sentences. For the instructions, we are using the form of the word, uh, I'm sorry, we are using another form of the word in brackets. So we have to make it make sense, right? So this is where we reviewed a little bit about the 
um, infinitive clauses and phrases, a little bit about the um, gerund. So we are going to get into a little bit of past participle specifically for this one, past participle as adjectives or nouns, right? And in the following exercises, we'll review passive and we'll review infinitive clauses. So remember that as we are completing this. So if we say that these glasses have a scratch on the lens, what's the other way to say it using past participle? So you remember that yeah. when we're using yeah. they are scratched. That's right. Exactly, that's right. So when we are using the past participle, as nouns, we can say that something has or have a noun on it or in it or the complement, right? And when we're using it as an adjective, we say the form of the verb plus ed, or we have some exceptions that we will review right now. So yes, they are, oops, sorry. They are scratched. Right. Let's see number two, my new car is dented. It has a dent on the door. Dent. Dent on the door. Dent on the door. And number three, there is a small leak in the aquarium. It is? Leaking. Leaking, that's right. Leak is okay. one of the verbs that we have an exception for. So for the word leak, we will always do leaking. I got number five wrong. Okay, we're almost there. There, uh, It is leaking. We're almost in number five. We'll review it. Let's do number four. Look at the crack in that wall. It is? Crack. 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 An adjective. Okay, now we do the review for number five. I think Javier also asked about number five. So this dress is stained. There are several bad stains, stains on it. That's right, stained. So we have several, meaning more than one. So there are several bad stains on it. So yes, one stain, but it, there are several, so it stains. Alrighty, for part two, we need to use the correct form. Recuerden que igual vamos a ir revisando cada ejercicio to check if we have them correct. So for part two, we need to use the correct form of need and add any words that, uh, any additional words we need. So those towels are so dirty. They need, need, they need, they need washing, right? Remember, this is need or keep plus gerunds. Right now we're using need. Number two, the waste basket in your bedroom is full. It needs. It to needs. Be. Needs to be. Needs to be. Exactly. There we go. Remember, when we are using infinitive, uh, I'm sorry. When yeah, when we're using infinitive clauses, need to. We need to, and then the verb, right, in the form. It need, uh, so we're talking about the wastebasket, so it needs to, right? Because I need to, you need to, but it needs to, she needs to. So for this example, mm -hmm. it needs to be. Exactly, to be emptied. Number three, the grass in the front yard looks extremely dry. It needs water. It needs ing. We have a g around, so we will use needs. Yeah. No needs to be. No need to use to. 
it just needs water. The microwave oven is broken. It needs, needs to be needs to be needs to be replaced. Excellent. Awesome. In part number three, asks us to complete the conversation with rather or prefer. Remember, we rather or prefer to. So keep that in mind. Letter A. Would you rather 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 learn the drums or the piano? Or would you prefer to learn the drums or the piano? We'll see. We I heard rather. So we take him and head on rather. So we will put down rather. And the answer B is prefer. well. Prefer. Prefer. Prefer, prefer not to play the drums. One day I'd like to join a jazz band. So I guess, right? Prefer. 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 Awesome. And finally, I think add rather, 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 not learn either instrument. I want to be a singer. Awesome. So now we review. And we have it all yes. right. Yes. So, mm -hmm. las personas que teníamos dudas uh, about section five, does this, uh, I'm sorry, about this section with exercise five, does this help? Kesa states. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Awesome. Yeah, thank teacher. You. Excellent. So several states. Perfect. We made it to section C. All righty. Section C needs us for us to pick the right word or phrase. We have five exercises in the first part. And then four exercises for the second part. So let's start here. The options that we have are dying, jamming, or replacing. I can't make a phone call. My cell phone keeps dying. Teacher, teacher sorry. Dying. Yes. Um, in the last, in the, uh, how do you say the, the, <laughs> the last um, section? See? Si? Yes, in the second. Okay. In the last one? All right. It's prefer. So, uh, rather. so remember okay. that when we use, uh, when we have two, we will use prefer because oh, yeah. we use prefer to. And for the ones that we only have the verb right after, we will use rather because you rather learn, or would you prefer to, or rather. So, aquí dependemos de la forma de la oración que tenemos a continuación. Sabemos que si lleva to, va a ser prefer, y sabemos que si lleva el verbo, solamente vamos a hablar con rather. Okay, thank you. Perfect, thank you for your question. Alrighty. So, we were in... Uh, section C, exercise one of part one. I can't make a phone call. My cell phone keeps dying. 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 What about the buttons? The buttons on my remote control don't work right. They keep sticking, dying, sticking. or adjusting. Sticking. 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 Number three. This printer is useless. It keeps jamming. jamming. It's jamming, right? The pages keep just getting stuck. My internet service is driving me crazy. The connection keeps dropping. adjusting. Dropping. Adjusting or dropping? What do you say? Dropping. Dropping. Se cae la conexión, right? So the connection keeps dropping. Okay. Excellent. And number five, my desk light keeps flickering. 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 We said like the lights flicker. Flickering. 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 Nice. All righty. So for part two, we have four other exercises and we need to choose the right word or phrase as before. So 
For this one, we have the options famine, inflation, and political unrest. This is a vocabulary exercise. We need to pick the word that makes the most sense. We reviewed some of these words in previous um, sections. So I'm very concerned about, it's terrible um, that millions of people don't have enough food to eat. Um, um, uh, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, that's right. Um, extreme hunger, right? People who are extremely hungry, that's famine and don't have any money or food. So when a country suffers from, there often aren't, uh, just aren't enough jobs for all its citizens. Overpopulation. 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 Right, so there are way too many people. Number three, if Greg showed his parents some, they all might get along better. Courtesy. Tolerance. Courtesy. Courtesy, that's right. Or courtesy, that's right as well. Number four, I didn't learn on my own. Operation. I learned it by operation. operation. All righty, let's review. Let's see how we did. And we have it all right. That is correct. Any questions with this section so far? No. No. Right. Then we can move on to the second to last section, la penultima sección. We are going to write down the answers. We'll write down the rest of the sentences. We need to choose the, one of the following options. So we have four options here. We need to, we only have three exercises. So we need to pick the three right ones so that we can make this sentence make sense, right? So the best ways, so more than one, ways to avoid cancer are number one, two, three, or four. Number two, to walk every day and eat number two. vegetables. All righty. So R, and would you say that I should put two or just walk? Two, to walk. Two, to walk. All righty, to walk every day and eat. Fresh vegetables. What about number two? One way to end government corruption is number one, three, or four? To end number one, to number end one. wasteful one. spending. And wasteful spending. Okay. So to end, right? And the last one that we have, the best way to reduce trash is three or four. To start recycling programs. To start, to start recycling programs. All righty. So we have another section. We have part two of this section. We need to do the exact same thing, but we are going to be using by plus gerund. Ya sabemos que los gerunds terminan in ing. So we will pick the correct three ones. So a good way to spend a rainy day, a rainy weekend is? <clears throat> by writing a short story. By writing a short story, all right, all right. Let's stay try home. Oh, no, no, Let's no, no. stay home. A good way to spend a rainy weekend is. What do you say? Am I writing a short story? Am I writing a short story? Okay. Yes. Am I writing a short story? And our Gerund is writing, right? By plus Gerund. The best way to eat healthy is the best way to eat healthy is avoid by avoiding sugar high fat foods. Yes, avoid sugar. By avoiding by avoiding, by avoiding. by avoiding sugary high fat foods. 
it's okay. In the number three, you can learn to dance better. By taking classes. Okay, but that's not one of the options. So how would you say? By don't taking a class, go out and by, by, by going, going out. out. The not by going taking out. class. Not by taking class, by don't taking or by not taking? By not taking. By not taking. There we go. By not taking a class. But by, by going, out. going out to the clubs. Right, let's review. Let's see if we got it right. Let's see. So what's going no. on? What's going on with everything? What do you put, think it could the, be? Put the, the point. That's right. Our little friend, the period at the end of the sentences. It always happens. ¿Por qué hacemos la revisión aquí de eso? Porque... That way, you don't get frustrated alone, ¿verdad? Así ya sabemos si tenemos que agregárselos y ustedes no se frustran solitos cuando lo estén haciendo. Let's review again. So, teacher, no. and the going? last one. Yeah. I write, I write, not by taking. Not by class. taking. class. Yes. All right. Let's review. Not by taking a class. And why do you think that is? Because in the in the example they explain this the the there we go. How do you say it? Explica una parte de ese, de ese de esa frase. It explains a part of that phrase, right? So okay. aprendamos por qué tenemos que poner el not first. Si ya hemos aprendido que en otras situaciones no vamos a decir, no vamos a decir. I not drink, eso estaría incorrecto, right? I don't drink, o I will not go. No voy a decir I not will go. Pero ¿por qué en esta situación sí ponemos not primero? Porque lo que estoy diciendo es you can learn to dance better not by taking a class, but by going out. Entonces lo que estoy diciendo es yo aprendo mejor no de esta manera, sino que de esta manera. Esta es la manera en la que hacemos esta expresión y por eso se hace esta excepción. So, lo que estoy diciendo es, no estoy diciendo que yo aprendo mejor no yendo a una clase, sino que estoy diciendo, yo aprendo mejor yendo a un club en vez de ir a una clase, right? So, we are still like in the prefer and what's best kind of thing. So you can learn to dance better, not by going to, not by taking a class or not by going to a class, but by going to the clubs. So going to the clubs is better. That's what we're saying. No sé si se comprende la diferencia de por qué aquí sí se hace eso. Is it clear why we do that? So, sorry, teacher, what, what is the complete answer for the last one oh, not by yeah. taking a class but not by taking a class but by going out to the club okay thank you excellent all righty and we just have one more section we have the reading section so let's make that big abramoslo and we have six exercises for that. We will be finishing our review with that. So we have true or false questions, right? So let's go ahead and review. Who wants to help me read the first paragraph? Who wants to read this paragraph for the reading of developing good study habits? Me. Go ahead. Good study habits can help you learn better and make homework less stressful. 
These ideas are helpful for managing homework and study time. Thank you so much. That's awesome. All righty. Who wants to read the next one? Can I, teacher? Go ahead. For each hour you spend in class, spend one to two hours studying outside of class. Keep track of success and problems. What problems have you had in your classes? How did you solve them? Are there any solutions or strategies that work for you? Perfect. Thank you so much, Roxana. All righty. Pleasure. Who wants to do the next one? This part and this part too. Who wants to do the next one? Go ahead. Who was that? I'm sorry. Leymar. Go ahead, please. Start working on major projects as soon as they are assigned. Write all homework assignments, tests, dates, and assignment deadlines on a calendar. Make a, a schedule every week for each day's homework, mm -hmm. but be sure to leave time for rest and recreation. Thank you so much, Leymar. So make a schedule. Like that word is schedule. 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 Thank you. Awesome. Repeat it, please. Schedule. Schedule. Yeah, schedule. that's right. All righty. And that is a schedule is um, a program for you, right? This is a schedule. So we have a schedule, an agenda. All righty. Let's do the next one. Who wants to go next? Me, teacher, it's my turn. Go ahead. What is the meaning of thorough? <laughs> thorough. Thorough. Thorough means that uh, it goes through a process and it's, it goes very much in depth as on Es a profundidad. That's what it means. So take thorough notes or notas muy detalladas o muy a profundidad. <laughs> All right. So who said that uh, that was going to read? Who was that? Okay. Uh, take thorough <laughs> notes about important ideas okay. in your reading. You Use different nice. colors of five okay. folders to organize your mm -hmm. notes for each class, review your notes regularly. Review your notes regularly. Thank you so much, all right. So take thorough notes, perfect. And who wants to read the last paragraph, the last one? Me, by discovering what techniques are best for you, you can set goals, identify problems, find appropriate solution and take the stress out of homework. Perfect. Thank you so much for helping me read. And now we will solve the final section. So can, uh, can you reduce stress by having good study habits? Yes. True. Yes. Awesome. Yes. And does it matter what time of the day you study? False. 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 All righty. What about, uh, do you think about, um, if you think about what you want to study on a particular day, you're wasting your time? Is that true or false? Mm, false. 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 Okay. So the best time to study for a test is the night before. Is it true or false? False. 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 <laughs> <laughs> When you plan your study week, you should include some time for fun. True or false? True. 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 Yeah, super true. And yeah. talking to yourself in a mirror is a good way to study. What do you think? True or false? True. 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 All right. Let's review how we did. We are absolutely right. We have everything right. All right, guys. And with that, we would be completing the review for this midterm test. We reviewed all five sections. Do you have any other questions with this review? 
or is everything clear? Okay, in that case, if there are no questions, if you do have any other questions, please feel free to type them in the WhatsApp chat. I can continue to help you throughout the night. Remember to please continue working on the platform. Now we have solved the midterm test. So you uh, can of course go ahead and complete it on your platform. And next week we will continue with section four. So be ready to start section four on Monday. Um, I hope you have a happy weekend and that you stay safe through the weekend and I will see you on Monday. Thank you. Okay, see you Thank you, Monday. teacher. Thank you. See you. Happy Thank weekend. You. Happy Goodbye. weekend for you. Enjoy your Thank you weekend. so much. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye.